All right, weapons at your side. Welcome, everyone. Arte. 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 Ardore. Ardore. Honore. 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 And you can put the swords down for the time. Let's start with the warm up. So rolling your shoulders back. Uh, today we're continuing to look at uh, just uh, the advanced Joko Stretto stuff. So we're looking at a uh, concept of regaining control and well, the mechanics specifically of regaining control and following through with that. Switch directions. Big difference between uh, what well, we, we uh, practice with a partner is with a partner, we can really focus on the regaining control component. What I want to emphasize today is the following through. If you gain control, you thrust, you follow through with something else. Right, hands at your sides, so rotating your forearms around your elbows. So we can, there's a lot of mechanics and the interesting things that we can do after we have, uh, when from a position of we have, we must regain control, we must get on top of our partner's sword. What do we do from there? What are some options that are available that are certain so directions? What are some options from there that are alternative to uh, just getting back on top and following through with the center line thrust? Hands in your hips, start rotating hips around your shoulders. So having a discussion with Ben, switch directions, about regaining control and maintaining control. And mechanically, they're not very different. The objective of maintaining control and regaining control are make the smallest motion required for you to get back on top. The difference is, tactically, when you are maintaining control, you never get, you never lose control. You never be on the bottom. You never are, you're never on the bottom of the sword. Shoulders around the waist, keep your back straight. If you want to keep your legs straight here, you can also do so to activate those hamstrings. So tactically, it's when you regain control, or so when you get back, you're on top, that really makes a difference. So obviously we cannot practice that. So I'll cover a little bit of both with the footwork and the bodywork switch directions. That would be involved, like surrounding uh, those actions with some neat kind of alternative ways to regain control, uh, to get back on top and deliver an attack that your opponent might not be expecting. All right, fit together, bend your knees, start making small circles with the knees. So directions. Yes. All right, grab your swords right away. I'll follow you on some of the things we did last month, uh, awareness of where your sword is. Let's start with some exercises just to get our uh, arms moving and our sword moving and just figure out where our body is in relationship to the sword. All right, so grabbing your sword, what I want to start with is using your cross guard as a reference, you're going to be pulling the sword around your head without stabbing yourself. Your goal is to keep your head mostly static, so it's easy to kind of move it away. Move your sword around your head and don't get stabbed by the keons. I'm just going from one shoulder to the next, and I'm thinking about the flat of the sword is always facing my face, and I'm just bringing it back to the other side. You can actually go clockwise, kind of think about going one direction. Oh, I need to crouch so that I don't hit the ceiling. In fact, let's actually make that even more interesting. Feet about shoulder width apart, bend your knees, nice horse stance, shoulders over hips, and keep on doing that. That'll be a nice, good warm up. All right, switch directions with the rotation. This is very similar to what you might be doing with kettlebells, no, not kettlebells, sorry, uh, Indian clubs or the mace. These are similar exercises that you might do with just the weight of the exercise. All right, hang on your left, uh, sword on your left hand, bring the sword towards your shoulder, send it out. Bring it in, send it out. So we're not trying to cast it out, we're trying to maintain a smooth, controlled, motion throughout the entire 
transition. So it's easy to kind of flick the sword out where it'll tend to rotate in your hand. What we want to do is we want to accelerate it to around here and then just continue the motion until it gets to about the posa longa. Bring the sword back, bring it forward. And it can also be in a nice horse stance just to give you a nice little extra lock to the legs. If you want to be in a lunge position, let it also work nicely. about lifting my elbow and bringing my elbow down just to get a lot of range of motion on your shoulders and throughout the arm switch hands again it can be horse stance lunge start casting the sword forward and back is this us practicing pulling the scabbard from our backs yep that's exactly it i'm just Drawing it from a magical scabbard that allows me to actually draw. Actually, I can draw a sword from a uh, uh, scabbard and a sword from my back because I'm tall enough, but most mortals are not. <laughs> right. Uh, two hands. Uh, you're going to want to have a lot of space behind you. So I'm going to start in Kora Longa, and I'm going to be facing to my left. From Coralonga, I'm going to be rear weighted, making sure that I have enough space, as I just mentioned. Push on the pommel. You're kind of scorpion tailing the point so that it goes over your head, and you're going to deliver a thrust. And then you finestra on the dominant side. You're going to recover back to finestra, come into Coralonga, come through Porto de Ferro, and deliver a thrust from below. Then you're going to go all the way back the top and from the bottom to the top from the bottom and you're just alternating between these two actions for now getting comfortable with the range of motion i am forward weighted i'm rear weighted rear weighted rear weighted forward weighted letting the sword lead the action when you're going forward and the sword and the body move simultaneously when moving back You want to emphasize a little bit of footwork. I push from the back leg when I'm going forward, and I push from the front foot when I'm going back. All right, switch, uh, switch your uh, facings so that you're now in a cross hand coralonga. You're going to be going over your head, extend forward and strike in finestra, sinestra, then come back into the chingara, cross hand chingara, and end up from through chingara into an extended. Uh, post along the thrust and back, go forward, back, forward. And you can really exaggerate when you're delivering the thrust forward, extend a hand and then come all the way back. Make sure that the hand is well extended before you shift your weight forward. Next variation, we're gonna go back to the original side, but we're gonna add a cover as we retreat. So if I'm facing the camera, I've delivered my thrust in finesta. I'm going to imagine a disengage or a small circle with the point of the sword, and I'm gonna strike up to beat any sword out of the way. So then I'm coming into finestra, defensive position. Finestra, offensive. Finestra, defensive. I come all the way through, coming back into Posalonga. From here, I'm going to drop the point and deliver a reverse of indented to cover the line so that I can end all the way back into Coralonga. Then I can deliver the thrust from above, strike, cover, strike, cover. Okay, that's why you need a little bit of space. If you don't have a lot of space just to do powerful big swings, don't do so. Make it small enough so that you can maintain control of your sword. Facing the left, starting Coralonga, Go ahead and begin. Thrust, cover, thrust, cover, thrust, cover, thrust, cover. I'm going to watch the screen, make sure that 
we're keeping that through. And really think about the cover as a transition, a smooth transition between finish the thrust, you're covering and you're flowing into Coralonga all the way to the thrust on the other side. When you deliver the reversal, it's a reversal that goes into Coralonga to the other side. Give it a few more cycles. All right, switch facing. So starting to the right, facing to the right, you are delivering a thrust from above. Drop the point, cover coming into Fenestra, coming into Coralonga cross, uh, Chingara cross hands, thrust from the other side. Now you're going to deliver Mandretto that covers all the way through and you scorpion tail to the other side. And pause. All right, so there's a lot of ways to practice regaining control, maintaining control, with this engaged mechanic. So what I want to really emphasize as we're doing this is you have a lever in your hand, maximize the usage of the lever. So both hands move, primarily driven through the pommel hand. What I really want to do is you can see my point. My point can move quite a bit with just the motion of my pommel. Ideally, you actually use both hands, a little bit of this, just dropping and lifting with your fingers, but driving the motion entirely, like the power of the motion through the pommel. Another way to think about moving the long sword is my pommel hand uh, generates speed, velocity, and motion, and my dominant hand generates line and direction. So when I'm moving, it's really about combining both the actions to get your sword in the right place. So the simplest mechanic you can practice, and I'm gonna show it, but we're not gonna do it, is simply getting you comfortable moving clockwise or counterclockwise in my, in, from my perspective, or clockwise, just moving forward one way or the other. Now this is useful in terms of generating range of motion, especially if you have difficulties making small disengages. This might be just a useful thing. Take a doorknob and just practice moving around the doorknob. Making smaller things for you to move around in smaller circles, the tightness uh, will help you generate precision with the motion of the sword. Unfortunately, that will train you to do very good circles. And a cavazione, ideally, is really a motion down and up, almost like a V, but ideally, just coming up, up and down on the same line. So I'm gonna pull out a fantastic sword here. That good old sword out of line sword. You can kind of see the idea of the sword is, if I am underneath the sword, what I want to do is I want to get back on top with as little motion as possible. So the mechanic that we can practice in this case, and we'll do this for a couple minutes, is I am dropping the point and I'm moving back in this case, because I don't have a lot of space behind me, I'm gathering back, dropping the point just enough so that I can lift the point back up, extend the sword, come back forward. So I'm under, underneath the sword, drop, come back forward. Um, the timing here is important. I'm doing back up and drop and re uh, come back up all in first time or the first beat. One gets me all the way back on top of the sword. Two, I can extend my hands. Three, I get back in into measure. So I'm going one, two, three. To practice this dynamically and on both lines, I want to really think about I am underneath the sword. I am regaining control. So instead of just going pointing to the other side, I'm actually going to position myself underneath the sword so that I'm moving so that my false sword here is on top. Now I can do the same thing from the opposite side. Retreat, drop, recover control, extend hands, move back forward, move to the other side, retreat, regain control, step forward. My goal, especially if you do have a sword, really make it as small 
possible, as vertical as possible. The backing up motion lets me drop the sword straight down, bring the sword straight back up, extend, and we have control. That is the ideal cavazione. I heard there was a question. Okay, next minute, we're just gonna be doing disengage inside, disengage outside, practicing the mechanics, making it as small as possible, or as functional as possible. So go ahead and begin. You have been found, you're going to regain control on the inside. They have found you on the inside, you gain control to the outside. Switch lines. Watching you folk for a moment. Good enough. This is good homework. Just getting practicing, getting comfortable making small, tight disengages that put you back on the same line that you started. So final piece of advice for these types of motions. I'm not going up and down. I have an angle to my sword my sword, essentially the true edge is pointed to my left, to my inside. When I finish this, the true edge still pointed to the inside. In fact, unless I have to change the line, I won't. I try to stay on the same line that I started, right? So that's a way to consider how to uh, kind of practice this when you don't have a sword in, in front of you. So let's start making this a little bit more interesting. Let's add a beat to the action. So. When you're recovering control, the simplest thing that you can do is simply, I get back on top and I push a thrust. Now the long sword is useful in other ways. It can generate a lot of power against an opponent's sword. And that's what we're gonna look at next. Important for you to practice it, but also practice against. A lot of people don't recognize that finding can be a very subtle positional component of the sword fight. And it'll try to strike your sword away. So it's useful to understand how people can generate force and how to defeat it. Right now, we're just going to work on the mechanics of generating force. So I'm going to start with the sword a little bit more withdrawn. Actually, no, that's, that's a lie. We'll add that in a second. I'm going to be found on my outside line. Instead of doing a small motion to get back on top, I'm actually going to drop the point a little bit more to create a little bit more space. And I can strike with a fendente, ideally downward, but it can also be horizontal, ideally downward, so that I can strike my opponent's sword forcefully out of the way and then follow through with a thrust of my choice or an attack of my choice. So really it's the same action, but slightly bigger so that it can generate more power, smack it down and strike through. A cool artifact that I'm generating right now is that I'm not actually striking the sword. It's also true when I'm, actually what uh, the, the artifact is, my sword ends up in Bossa Longa. If the sword is a little bit higher, I'm actually ending the same position. I'm just imagining I'm striking through it. I want to end with my sword here, not with my sword down there, because then it doesn't really generate what I want. So I am disengaging, striking the sword out of the way, following through with the thrust. So this is true edge, true edge. Uh, it can be done on both sides. On the outside, I'm disengaging. Because of the nature of how my hands are, I am crossing my hands a little bit more lifting the point up and coming with a reverso, using the pommel to generate a lot of the power. Once I've struck the sword out of the way, I can follow through with the thrust of my choice. So this is the most generic way. I'm covering the four uh, exercises that I want so that we can practice all of them together. It's simply the disengage with a, a little bit more power. And it can be done inside and outside. What if you come with the false edge on either one of the sides. And this is where it gets interesting. I've been found on my outside. I disengage, and instead of coming with a true edge, I come with a false edge. 
thinking about I'm going to deliver strike up to beat my partner's sword, just a devil out of the way to create enough space. I have a few options here. Option one, he's delivered a strike, push the pommel forward and deliver a thrust. No problem. So I'm disengaging, striking with a false edge, pushing a thrust forward. Alternatively, I delivered a false edge strike. And instead of just striking here and following through with a thrust, I'm going to lift up my sword and deliver a strike. You can imagine it as a rising blow or a mezzano into the hands. So this becomes deflection, strike up. And I'm doing this all, pommel pushes forward. I pull the pommel up to deliver my strike into their hand. This advantage, you're not immediately covered with your sword, but you can cover yourself by attacking their sword hand. This is done with a decisive blow to the hand to either cut it off or uh, impede their ability to move the sword forward. So you can think about this as deflect, thrust, or deflect, cut. Okay. Then on the other side, same idea. I will go th through them together in a second. Yeah. I disengage, coming essentially into Chingara, into very high Chingara, and I deliver deflection by moving my false edge across my opponent's sword. You can actually create a much better deflection in this case just because of how your hands are set up. From here, you can again have that option of following through with the thrust. So deflect thrust, or I can deliver deflection and pushing the pommel, I can deliver mitsan into my opponent's hands. Or if I change the angle a little bit, deflect rising blow into my opponent's hands and then follow through with the thrust of my chest. So let's go through just to have a mechanically distinct, we're gonna have four actions that we're gonna deliver. We're gonna have true edge, strike with a true edge, follow through with a thrust, do the same thing on the outside, strike with a true edge, follow through with a thrust, then switch lines, deflect, cut to the hands, deflect, cut to the hands. Okay? Any questions before we begin? Let's begin. Starting with our opponents have found us on the outside, Beat to the inside, follow through with a thrust. They find you on the inside. Beat to the outside, follow through with a thrust. They find you on the outside. You're going to deflect, cut their hands. They find you on the inside, deflect, cut their hands. They find you on the outside. Beat, thrust, switch lines. Beat, thrust, switch lines. Deflect. Cut, switch lines, deflect, cut, switch lines. Beat, thrust, switch lines. Beat, thrust, switch lines. Deflect, cut, switch lines. Deflect, cut, switch lines. Beat, thrust, switch lines. Beat, thrust, switch lines. Deflect, cut, switch lines. Deflect, cut, switch lines. Beat, thrust, switch lines. Beat, thrust, switch lines. Deflect, cut, switch lines. Deflect, cut, switch lines. Pause. I'm gonna move my trusty sword assistant out of the way. The thrust, the deflection, and the follow through by the cut can really, you can deflect, begin a thrust, and change it into a cut. And that is a useful mechanic to practice as well. If I do it from the side, I'm going to be, they have found me on the outside. I'm deflecting from Port of the Pharaoh. I can initiate a thrust that becomes a cut. You can imagine someone is yielding. If your opponent is deciding to yield, their hands, the thrust is no longer available, well, the hands are. This is where that is nice and useful. So what we're gonna do next is, we're gonna add a follow through action. Well, actually, you know, before we do that, let's just practice the deflection, switching between sides, and add a fluidity to it. So I am deflecting, thrusting, delivering a cut. If I'm on the opposite line, deflect, we initiate a thrust that turns into a rising ball. Deflect, rising blow, deflect, 
rising ball. Deflect. Rising ball. Deflect. Rising ball. Just keep an alternating between the two. We'll do this for about one more minute. Focusing on having beat thrust cut. Really think about beat thrust cut. Smooth those actions out. Beat thrust cut. Seconds. And pause. Any questions? Now? Yeah, the, the deflection with the thrust feels a little bit awkward, but that's maybe because no one's in front of me. Possibly. Uh, uh, so which, the deflection with the thrust? So the deflection followed by the thrust and mm -hmm. then going into the cut. So. I've deflected their sword away and I'm thrusting at their hands for to make them pull away and then cutting to them? Depends. Okay. Uh, you're thrusting so that they respond to it. Okay. Right? So really what I want to have is the immediate response of, I want to control their sword and immediately threaten. Because if I'm immediately threatening them, they must defend themselves. I know, but you're saying control the sword, but I've deflected them away. No, no controlling the line. Controlling the line, okay. Controlling the line, so that's a, that's a good distinction. I am, their sword is either there or not, it doesn't really matter. I am thrusting into the line, okay. so that they have to either yield or do something to my sword, which gives me the opportunity to strike your hands. Okay. So I'm deflecting mm -hmm. and delivering a thrust uh, into their hands, depending on what, uh, into their hands or into their body, depending on what's happening. So yes, if you don't have a partner, a little bit weird. Uh, actually, Sandra, because you're the only person that I know that has someone to, has someone to practice with, I'll give you that as a homework. Make this work with your, uh, with your partner and create a scenario where this works. Yeah. All right, let's get out of a few more steps after the fact. So what I really, I am deflecting and I'm placing my point in front. I'm not really thinking about th uh, deflect, thrust, they do something, respond. I am thinking about deflect immediately, threaten, and continue through. It's a fluid thrust. I am initiating the action, hopefully expecting my opponent to respond to that. And if they were not to respond, there is a moment of going, well, I'm just going to continue through with the thrust. Right? Order is important in this case. So if I really slow it down, I'm delivering a th deflection, thrusting, oh, they're exposing their hands. I can follow through with a cut. Unfortunately, that is, may not be enough for us to stay safe, so let's add a guarded retreat to this whole debacle. Exclusively, they have found me on the inside, on the outside, my apologies, they have found me on the outside. I'm going to deflect, initiate a thrust, cut to their hands. I'm going to, two options here. I cut to the hands, extend to post along the follow through with a the thrust, then back up with a fendente to cover the line, or simply back up right away with a fendente. So deflect, initiate a thrust, cut their hands, back up with a cut with cover. Uh, let's add the immediate retreat. Just I like that as a, as a mechanic, the switch of directions and because of space constraints, that might be a little bit easier. I'm going to deflect, cut their hands, immediately cover as I back up. Thinking about Gathering to deflect, cut their hands, guarded retreat, stepping back. Deflect, deflect, cut the hands, guard and retreat. Deflect, cut the hands, guard and retreat. Deflect, and guard and retreat. 
Ten more seconds. And pause. Same thing on the opposite side. I am going to, I have been found in the inside. I'm going to deflect from Chingara, cut to the hands, reversal to cover. Deflect, cut, cover. Go ahead and begin. Three more seconds. So after, you, uh, so you've deflected them. You cut to their hands. Um, are you kind of cutting underneath them, or do you think you've displaced them enough that their point is like way offline? Uh, right now, I'm aiming for either the hand or their body, depending on how close they are. Okay. I am deflecting. I'm initiating the thrust. Either they're trying to yield, or they are, uh, or they're trying to parry. My sword comes free, I strike what's available, and regardless, I back up with a reverse of an to cover whatever line is available. The nice thing about this is it will work against a lot of different situations, given the nature of the, of the attacks. You can aim, still aim for sword arms, you can aim for body, you can aim for face, but this, the flat, this thrust can end low and a little higher or end super high, yeah. giving me a good range of potential targets. And then regardless, just back up to keep yourself covered. Another question. Are you, are you like yielding to come back on top or are you just like pivoting? No, I am finishing the blow and doing a mezza volta. I finished the blow. I use the pommel to use a mezza volta to drop the sword to my side and strike shortly. So it's not a full stramazzone. Yeah, I'm uh, delivering a reverse. So really think about you all you're doing all reversals in this case. I am delivering a reversal of falso sotano, delivering a reversal sotano, delivering a reverse of indente. So all the preparations happen on my uh, on my inside line. Answer the question. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> With a partner, get them to yield, get them to parry. See how that changes things. If my partner yields, the nice thing is once I've created this deflection, they're likely to yield that way because they're expecting this thrust. That's where they need to yield. So if they're expecting this thrust, their hands are, the sword is that way, their hands are exposed on this side, that actually gives you a nice open line to follow through here. I deflect, they come back with a parry. I can actually pull my sword away so that my sword is no longer parried and I can strike into their hands or into their chest as I deliver my blow. And I can change the angle so that it's not as high. It comes a little bit lower so that it comes across their hands instead of up into their face. So those are some few alter alternatives that we can consider here. With the same mechanic of regaining control, we're gonna change tracks ever so slightly. Um, I'm going to uh, use the beat, the idea of the beat or deflection from a bigger motion. So one of the 
most challenging places we will find that we have to defend ourselves against the thrust is after you deliver a big cut. Uh, if you are wise, or if you are aware of it, or maybe you just, that's how it was in your plan, if I know my opponent likes to do Gioco Stretto, I might finish my attack and stay in Gioco Stretto. I might finish a cut and stay in Gioco Stretto. But periodically, we'll find ourselves taking off position and go, oh no, there's a thrust coming. If the sword is a little bit higher, we can do the same small motion that we just incorporated, but you don't have that luxury. You are caught off guard. So practicing the mechanic of you finish the cut, you realize I need to cover this line. Here's a few options that you have available to you. Option number one, I'm delivering a fendente. I realize I need to defend myself against the thrust. I am going to finish the cut, let him make a small circle. And as I gather back or I move back, I'm going to deliver the beast to the inside. That is the most reliable, easiest, fastest method to deliver that, uh, that defense. I finish a fendente, come back with another fendente on the, on the same line, but smaller action in for the sword. So I can deliver the cut, gather back to beat, and follow through with a thrust or a cut, or actually whatever, whatever follow through action you want to incorporate. Same idea from the opposite side. Here is it a little bit different. We'll cover that in a second. For the next minute, here's what I want you to do. You're going to deliver fendente, gather back to deliver another fendente, beating a center line, follow through the thrust cut or blow of your choice. So let's go ahead and begin. Cut, recover, straight back. Back to Posa di Donna. Cut, recover back. And you really want to have a smoothness between finishing the fendente and following through with your next action. It's really a full blow that you're striking all the way to the ground and you're getting caught off guard and following through. Mechanical, I should pause for a second. We'll start the timer again. As I finish the attack, I'm using the pommel and my lead hand combined to cover myself. I can use my arms, I'm in posta longa, come back to posta breve, so that I withdraw my sword a little bit faster. I'm delivering a cut, combining it with a gather back, that might actually be enough to give me space. If you don't have that much space, you might need to pass back to parry that. Perfectly fine. Also worthwhile to practice. Okay, keep on going. Now we'll get the minute going. Delivering a cut, recover, thrust. Might even play with delivering this all without stepping, only stepping towards the thrust. You might imagine you begin the action, you realize that you're delivering a thrust, you adapt to it right away. And pause. The opposite side. I'm delivering a reverso. I have the same option. It is the true fight response. It is going to be the tactically safest option. It is also slightly slower and mechanically more awkward. I'm delivering a reverso fendente. I cross my hands and come back with a reverso fendente again to cover the line. So the disadvantage of that is it's just awkward to do it fast. As I deliver my cut, this crossing of the hands is a little bit slower. It can be accomplished effectively by pulling the shoulders back so that without moving my, just moving my shoulders, my point actually gets where it needs to go. Then I can continue the motion of the sword. So I'm delivering my reverse of fendente and covering that line by pulling really rotating, getting the meta volta of the hips back so that my sword, the point will have enough space to cover the line. The problem is it's just awkward. It's easy to, it's a weak position to have. And until you have crossed at around here where your hand, sword is on top of your partner's sword, it's a little bit weaker. So you have another option and I encourage practicing both. I finish my reverso, I come back with a false edge. So as I finish the cut, I'm delivering a uh, deflection where I'm coming 
I'm disengaging my sword underneath my opponent's sword. And once I'm here, I pull the pommel to deliver a deflection. Two things you want to consider here. Make sure that it's not done like so, where there's a nice little triangle exposing your hands. I am, I want to still keep my lead hand in front of my, uh, my lead, uh, my lead legs hip. So in this case, right, uh, right hand in front of right hip. I've delivered my reversal. I'm doing this all through the pommel so that I get, I cover the line very powerfully. The nice thing is that this is just a deflection that we just practiced and you can follow through with a thrust of your choice or I deliver reverso, falso, falso cover, can follow through with a cut if I just so desire. So for the next minute, I want to encourage both actions. I deliver, I'll just do it from this side. I deliver my reverso, true edge, follow through with a thrust or reverso, deflection, follow through with a thrust or a cut of your choice. Okay, starting now. Go, oh, sorry, go ahead. The, the deflection, can you face to your left, I guess, again? That way? Sorry. Or the other way? The other way, yeah, yeah. Okay. And show the deflection, please. Deflection? No. Oh. So if I had a sword. Yeah, no, you're, so you're, you're deflecting to your right. Yes, I'm deflecting from Chingara. I am I'm moving my sword uh, from Porto de Ferro to Chingara so that it can deflect f to my outside. The outside, okay, cool, thank you. All right, go ahead, time. Uh, it is one minute, go ahead. Ten more seconds. And time. Grab a quick sip of water if you need it. And then if you have any questions, think about them as you drink water. If you have any questions, let me know. Following the, actually, questions first. Moving on. Following the idea of I have just finished a cut, I am in a place where I must defend, let's look at rising blows. They're my least favorite types of blows if I'm not confident that I can strike because it puts you in a situation where it might not be the most ideal one to defend again. Um, one of the simplest mistakes to exploit of someone that's really new or has really likes rising blows is that they will start with a rising blow. Rising blow is super easy to cover. It's very easy to overcome and it really doesn't, especially if you have distance to deal with it, it's really easy, it's easy to handle. That said, we just saw a situation where I'm delivering a rising blow. I, if you want to really set it up, I have uh, someone they delivered a cut, someone came at me with a thrust, I deflected it, it came with a rising blow, Maybe they backed away and now I caught, caught myself in a high guard when myself, I'm going to be exposed to something from below. So the nice, um, the nice thing about a rising blow is that the inertia of the blow kind of gets spent as you deliver the rising blow. If you're fighting gravity, it slows itself down. It's not as powerful, but it kind of stops fairly easily. So you have two options depending on the power of the blow and we've got to look at both of them because they're fun. Uh, one of them is the one that you're most likely to encounter. We fight with a lot of control. We tend to emphasize ending with a point online so that I can immediately move back. 
what I just showed is what you're going to do. So I can imagine, starting from uh, Dona Sinestra, I'm delivering a rising blow of some sort. Once I finish the blow, if there's a thrust coming at me, I'm going to cover the line by dropping my sword strongly onto that center line. It's worthwhile to refresh how you find and strike from Fenestra. Fenestra is not done here, it's done across. The nice thing about it is, when I have a sword in front of me, I'm not pointing parallel to the sword, I am on top of the sword already, I have already found a sword. My crossing, I already have the line crossed, I just haven't gained it yet, but it's just a matter of extending and rolling down on top of the, the sword to find it. So that's the nice thing about being in a high guard is that it's very easy to just find a sword, any sword, right away. So I've just delivered my rising blow. I go, oh no, there's a sword coming at me. The point comes across. If I have time to withdraw, I might, but for the purpose of the drill, we don't have to. I get the point across. I roll it, the forte immediately down. And the nice thing is that my point is just coming. It's not, it doesn't have to go forward. I have already crossed, I just descend on top of my opponent's sword. I've already found it. Same idea happens from the opposite side. I delivered a rising blow here. The point can come across and I descend on top of the sword. There's a few mechanical distinctions that I'm gonna cover right away, just that we be aware of them, and then we'll get onto the drill. From Fenestra, Destra, on the dominant side, pulling the pommel down actually gets the forte moving forward in front of you fairly early, it covers the line really effectively. It's just really about pulling the pommel down and then pushing down with your dominant hand so that you have the true edge engaged. You have control of the line, you follow through with the thrust. From Fenestra Sinestra, if you do that, your arm is actually exposed all the way until you get to the end of the, uh, the, end of the cover of the line. So you have to be aware of that. As I finish the blow, I'm pushing my pommel. I'm actually crossing my hands earlier, a little bit earlier. I might even move my body a little bit to my left, to my non-dominant side, so that I can profile my arm on top of the sword so that my arm is protected. So let's try to just do that for a moment. We deliver a rising blow from the right and in Fenestra. I want you to see how, as you roll to Posta Longa, your arm is actually exposed until the very end. Now try to adjust that by getting the point across the sword. And as you roll up, my arm goes, as, sorry, as you roll down, my arm is actually going a little bit up so that I'm hiding behind that, the steel of my blade sooner. So there's a moment of I'm pushing down, I'm lifting my elbow up so that it gets behind the forte. So that's a mechanic that we can practice in isolation, at least to develop the good habit of protecting your arm. So following the theme of the class, I'm delivering my rising blow. There's a sword in front of me. I'm going to gather and cover the line and follow through with a thrust. I deliver a blow from the opposite side, deliver a reversal. There's a thrust coming at me, gather back and descend upon the line to cover it, then follow through with a thrust on the other side. So I'm doing it to the camera. I'm delivering a rising blow. Oh no, there's a thrust. Cover, thrust back. Opposite side. Rise, thrust, cover, thrust from the other side. Go ahead and begin if you have not already. Uh, we have 40 seconds left. Go ahead. I'll keep on talking through, keep on going. As I withdraw, that mezzo volta of the hips actually helps a lot with bringing the sword into position. Mezzo volta makes it so that I have to move my arms less. I deliver the rising blow, mezzo volta lets me move my arms less. 10 more seconds. And pause. Okay. This is all an ideal situation. And in with a sword point forward, useful to practice. Typically it's where we're gonna end. 
there will be a time where your sword is not static. In fact, it has a lot of energy. I can imagine that either being deflected or my sword, I did a very powerful rising blow, my point is going offline. I don't have time to go, I'm gonna stop it and come back forward because it just in, uh, initially you have to fight the sword to stop and then move it back where it came from. It doesn't work like that. So a cool mechanic to practice is actually similar to what we were just doing with the deflections is I deliver my rising blow. It's very powerful. I'm going to change that into a mezzano to strike horizontally across everything in front of me. It's a windshield wiper. It's a downward windshield wiper. I'm delivering my rising blow. And you can really think about it as a powerful blow coming from below. This doesn't work. I push the pommel and strike across very strongly. This doesn't set me up for the best follow through action, but it does cover everything in front of me. Basically anything that's coming on the center line, either rising blow, even this is uh, potentially a descending blow, I can change this into a, co a cover that will protect me immediately. There'll be a few uh, um, adjustments that you have to do depending on your opponent's attack, but really thinking about someone that's thrust centric, I deliver my rising blow, whoops, no time to come back on the center line, cover strongly with a mezzano. The next follow through action can be something so, uh, borrowed from the Germans. I can come back with a, I believe a shield hell, uh, delivering a mezzano to their head, or come back to cover your line and follow through with a thrust. Same action from the opposite side. I'm delivering my reverse sotano. I go, oh no, I need to cover myself. I pull the pommel and deliver a mezzano across, covering everything in front of me. I can follow through with cover the line, another thrust, or depending on where my opponent's sword is, I can come with a false edge mezzano onto their head. So let's start with just one side and then we'll do the other side. Let's start with a, um, start with a sword import of the Pharaoh. I'm delivering my rising blow. I realize that I don't have time to come back from Finesta, so I continue through the Libra Mezzano, cover the line, thrust. All right, we have a minute, go ahead and begin. Rising blow turns into a Mezzano with a gather, cover, thrust. Are you throwing a mandrito or, or reverso as the third action? Uh, reverso. Okay. Uh, do both. Yeah. If you clear through, it's actually a good question. If I clear through with my mezzano, I can follow through with a mandrito, depending on where my opponent's sword is. Most likely, I bounce back because I'm more likely to engage the sword again, but if you put so much power, you deliver so much power into your blow that you're going through that sword, you can come back with a cut to their hands or something along those lines. All right, 10 more seconds. All right, from the opposite side, same idea, in principle, Delivering a reverse sotano, turns into a mezzano. Come back with a cut from the opposite side. Reverse sotano, mandretto mezzano, cover the line, thrust. And as Eric was asking, perfectly valid to deliver mezzano followed by a reverse of indente, depending on if you clear the sword or not. I'll do that one again, just if you're curious. my ceiling. I don't know if you guys heard that.
and pause. Kind of my final concluding remark about this, it's really, you can think about it as a yield in a lot of ways. It has the same function of a yield. I am placing my, my sword in a place where it covers the line and I am in a hanging guard. It's a nice way to think about it and look at it because it covers everything. It doesn't put you in an immediately better position, but it covers you fast. So getting out of there, that becomes a tactical decision. And well, once we have a tactical uh, opponent, we'll be able to explore that a little bit better. So we covered simple mechanics to just small mechanics to regain control with a true edge, with a false edge, follow through actions that recover, that involve thrusting and cutting back at our partners. We've looked at it from a scenario where my sword is in Joko Stretto and where my sword is in Joko Largo. And we looked at it from both above and below to, different, uh, to explore the different mechanics that are involved in that. Do you have any questions? We have about a couple more minutes before the cheer starts. So do you guys have any questions? The, um, uh, your second action, the Mezzano, mm -hmm. it, it is intended to clear, like it's a parry or deflection? It's a parry, most likely. It's really a cover action. So it's not, a, the interaction between my opponent's swords will depend on what their sword is doing. So I really think about it as I'm not striking, the, I'm not trying to do the, uh, create a particular type of uh, make, um, response. I'm trying to simply cover the line. Right. In the same way that when I find, I don't expect a particular response from my opponent necessarily. I simply cover the line. So this is just the same as covering the line without a good, without good crossing. I found myself out of position. I cover the line. So if I beat their sword out of the way, that's great. I'm just trying to get everything out of the way. I could deflect it. It could be a deflection. It could be a parry. It could be a collection. It, it could what also be nothing like they're just like in a Porta di Ferro or something. Yes, it could be that I deliver this blow. I realize that they begin to thrust, they just withdraw. Well, that puts me at least in a good place where my sword is moving to cover. They have not attacked me. That's the important thing. They have not attacked me, they have not struck me. This lets me cover most, uh, most lines that from this position and with a lot of energy, it's not a lot of ton of options that I have available. This will cover my important bits as it gives me time to follow through with maybe a thrust depending on what they have given me next. So it's a nice way to, especially when you have space, really adding a little bit of energy, just trying to go attack and flow into that cut to see where, how it puts you into the next position. With a partner, really get them to, you can think about it, um, your partner backs up against this cut and immediately begins a thrust. So you have to parry that. Try it at speed, where I'm delivering a cut at speed, my opponent de delivers a thrust. Can I cover it in a more efficient way? and I delivered a cut and simply parry that with a mezzano or the fight or whatever happens. It's an interesting way to practice that when you have a lot of inertia to the sword, see how it behaves. Does that answer? Yeah, yeah totally, thank you. Um, you have, Sander, you have homework. Try this with, with Tony. <laughs> <See what happens. laughs> uh, from last week, one an interesting thing that, that came up was the um, it's kind of a yielding thrust. My, my opponent is trying to push and I yield the thrust. If you have a partner, that's a great one to practice with them as well. Just seeing, can you get them to push into your sword and then turn it into a yielding thrust? Yeah. That's a cool, uh, that's a other cool mechanic to practice with the partner. Any other questions? No, just need to practice this. Wonderful, it's 6.59, so I, for one, will be done before the cheer starts. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll leave the Zoom running, and you can hang out and ask the questions after the class. Otherwise, weapons at your side. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Thank you. Arte. 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 Ardore. 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 Thank you very much. Have a great night. If you have any questions, hang out.